so keep your mouth closed. I got some city slippers with me, think they got dough. Then I'm gonna catch this monkey and just let them take it home. I am George, very raw and very, very curious. And when I'm hunting monkey, boy, I'm very, very serious. People try and catch them, trap them, put them in the zoo. Feel like Dr. Doolittle, I can talk to one or two. Ooh. I know what that monkey wants. Monkey wants. Get that monkey the banana. I can make that monkey talk. Get that monkey the Some people don't like monkey. I like it as a pet so I can pet it. It's a fun scene. But you gotta be careful cause it might have some fleas. I got to wear protection cause it might have a disease. Some are old, some are young, some are just stinky. I heard in certain places that there's only monkey eating. Barrel full of monkeys and y'all used to play that game. Now I take it home, keep it chained. I keep my monkey trained. I know what that monkey want. Two of the Ducks, your show, baby. Let's go. Yeah, welcome back to the show. Uh, February 2nd, 2017. Three days away from Super Bowl 51. Atlanta Falcons taking on the New England Patriots. I uh, I posted something yesterday on my social media, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Uh, by the way, if you uh, you want to come and hang out with your boy, man, for the uh, biggest Super Bowl party in ATL, which is going to be crazy this year because the Falcons are in it, man, come and hang out with me with PKK's Winter Classic Party. Uh, get your tickets right now. Uh, it's going to be over 1,000 people. Real good look. Uh, you have the ability to see big screen TVs. They'll be showing the games on at the Georgia Freight Depot. Um, you know, that ticket price covers your food as well. It's going to be a real good look. Trust me on this. PKKWinterPartyClassic.com. Oh, I'm sorry. PKKWinterClassicParty.com. PKKWinterClassicParty.com. So I mentioned... I mentioned, uh, I'm about to talk about storylines. One storyline that I haven't heard really talked about, or I guess, I, I guess I'd call it one scenario that I hadn't heard really talked about, is the possibility of the Atlanta Falcons winning this game Sunday on a blowout. Right, you heard me. Like, I've heard all the other scenarios. Falcons win in a close one. Uh, Patriots win in a close one. I've heard Patriots winning in a blowout. But I haven't heard anybody really talking about the Falcons, you know, winning in a blowout. I mean, it's very possible. 
if they make a couple of plays defensively, maybe get like a special teams touchdown. I'm talking about the Falcons. Maybe they get a special teams touchdown. Maybe they create some pressure on Tom Brady. He has a couple of errant throws, maybe a pick six, maybe a scoop and score, a sack, you know, fumble, scoop and score, something like that. The Falcons offense is going to score points. I mean, it's possible, right? Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm not, I'm not making that as my prediction right now. But, I mean, it's kind of disrespectful. Uh, it's kind of disrespectful that I've heard every scenario about what's going to happen in this game on Sunday, except for the Falcons win in a big way. The spread is only three points. Uh, the Patriots are the Patriots where they've been to six Super Bowls. This will be their seventh. They're trying to get their fifth ring. I get all of that. Um, but nobody on on New England's offense really scares me. You know, Edelman, uh, this Hogan kid. They don't have Rob Gronkowski. Um They've got Deion Lewis out of the backfield, but I think that Dan Quinn's going to be able to scheme well. So I, I don't know, man. I mean, this thing could be Falcons in a big way. I mean, if you would have asked anybody, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, if you would have asked anybody before the Green Bay, or when we did ask everybody before the Green Bay game, would the Falcons destroy Green Bay the way that they did, nobody in the world would have thought that. Nobody would have thought that. So why does it seem like that this thing is going to be New England in a close one or New England big? Um, and some people are picking the Falcons to win this game, but by the, by the minimalist of, of, of margin. Like nobody thinks that the Falcons, if they were to win, is going to win this thing handily. They got the number one scoring offense in the NFL. They got, they got a scheme that has shown that they, they, they can't be stopped. They got playmakers at every position. Kyle Shanahan, the offensive coordinator, is calling a phenomenal game plan. Matt Ryan is the league MVP, probably. He's probably going to win the award. Um, like, why not? Why not the Falcons in a blowout? I'm going to ask y'all that question. And listen. As good, as good as Julian Edelman has been this year, man, or throughout his career, really, Ain't nobody scared of no Julian Edelman. Ain't nobody scared of no Chris Hogan. This cat, what, he played one year of college football or something like that? Like, it ain't like you going up against Randy Moss and Michael Irvin or somebody like that. These cats are good. They're, what they are are their system pieces. And I'm not trying to say they aren't great players or good players, but they don't really scare anybody. They're not like that all-time type wide receiver like Randy Moss and Terrell Owens or Michael Irvin or Jerry Rice or somebody like that. So I think they could be had. And then you got a defensive-minded coach and Dan Quinn once again that's going to scheme the hell out of them, you know. The defense has been playing better. Dan Quinn has the little revenge factor as being the, the defensive uh, coordinator for Seattle when the Seahawks lost to the Patriots. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I read an interesting article, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, from Mike Coppinger, uh, writer for USA Today. And the, the headline is 10 Storylines to Watch for Patriots, Falcons, and the Super Bowl. Um, the number one thing he had is, can anyone stop Julio Jones? That's a very good point. Nobody's been able to stop Julio Jones. The man had a 300-yard game this year. Um, you may have kind of contained them, that old thing that they used to say on SportsCenter, but you're not going to stop them. You may control them a little bit, but you're not going to stop them. Uh, I mean, the man's going to dominate. Lombardi Trophy finally coming to ATL. Possibly? Now, I think this is very interesting, and I don't think we've talked enough about this. Uh, the Falcons are one of 13 teams never to win a Super Bowl. They've been to the big game only once, a 34-19 defeat to the Denver Broncos, a Super Bowl 33, Atlanta is staving, uh, starving or starving for a championship parade. The last one in 1995 with the Atlanta Braves. You know that. Um, there's another storyline, one for the thumb, and talking about the vaunted, cheating-ass New England Patriots. It's another storyline. No quarterback has ever won more than four Super Bowls. Tom Brady can break that mark with a victory in Houston this weekend. Um, and passing 
the great Joe Montana, with five rings on his fingers and seven Super Bowl appearance overalls, not to mention his sterling playoff record. Can anyone then doubt the former six-round draft pick is the greatest signal caller of all time? Me, me, I can, because he's a cheating bastard. Kills me how these cats just want to give Brady all of this, this kudos and all of this love and just ignore the fact that he probably been cheating the whole damn time he's been up there. Um, how about this? The X Factor. In two seasons, the Patriots are 16-0 and when running back Deion Lewis is in the lineup. Wow. That's going to be a big thing. I just talked about Deion Lewis, the running back for the New England Patriots, and how they use him out of the backfield. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. So when Deion Lewis, and he's had these little injury issues over the last couple of years, once again, in two seasons that the Patriots had Deion Lewis in the lineup, they are 16-0. and 0. He's in the lineup. That's not a good indicator. Is Matt Ryan elite is what the writer says. The Falcons leader has the MVP all but wrapped up after the regular season. He's been great in the playoffs, too. The Falcons rolled over both the Seahawks and the Packers with more than 35 points in each contest with a 1-4 playoff record entering the new year, now a distant memory. You remember, one of the big things about Matt Ryan was over the last couple of years or the years that they had made it to the playoffs that they really struggled. He was 1-4, such is not the case anymore. So they kind of got that little monkey off their back. How about the Falcons' upstart D? There's a storyline for this game as well. Atlanta's young defense uh, shined again in the NFC title game, this time against the previously red-hot Aaron Rodgers, spearheaded by Vic Beasley, who led the league in sacks with 15 and a half. It's a very good storyline. Like like the point I was just making about the Falcons possibly winning this game in a blowout. Like it's not inconceivable. Like why is it inconceivable once again? And he makes the point about this defense playing better and better and better each week. Can they continue that? You know, maybe the last six games of the season, they've been very good with a bunch of young guys. And, I mean, to do what they did against Aaron Rodgers – the game that Vic Beasley had, Rasheed Hageman with the big sack where he bowled over the the, the center uh, for the Green Bay Packers, man. The plays that they made, it was it was it was a shutout game at halftime. Oh, the Falcons were thirty three to nothing at halftime. The Falcons defense held the Green Bay Packers to zero points after an entire half. Why can't this thing be Falcons in the blowout? I'm not saying that's going to happen yet. Once again, I'm not saying that. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, one question he asked and mentions is one storyline. Chris Hogan and Julian Edelman. The Patriots picked up Michael Floyd on the scrap heap late in the season, and many observers believe he was the big body target New England was lacking with Gronkowski's sideline. But it seems they might not have needed reinforcements in the first place. Floyd was a healthy scratch Sunday or, or in the last game, and offseason pickup Chris Hogan just blew up, had 180 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Um, so it's going to be Hogan. It's going to be Julian Edelman. What are they going to give you? You know, once again, I like the fact that they're going against a defensive-minded head coach and Dan Quinn, that they should be able to figure a way to scheme Chris Hogan and Julian Edelman. I like that. If you're just a casual observer and you look at the two teams and you say, oh, uh, you know, are, are these guys going to dominate? These wide receivers going to dominate over a young Atlanta Falcons defensive secondary? You'd be like, uh, I don't know. Not really. I mean, they good. They good, but they ain't world beaters. So that's one thing. Are these guys going to show up big as they did in the previous games in the playoffs? Um, and one thing. The last two things that he mentioned is Bill Belichick chasing history, making his record seventh Super Bowl appearance, everyone's favorite hoodie, adorning coach, as he puts it, since tied with Steelers legend coach Noel, Chuck Noel, for the most all-time Super Bowl victories at four. If he gets his fifth, he will surpass the great Chuck Noel once again. Don't nobody want to see Bill Belichick cheating ass past the great Chuck Noel. (laughs) 